here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest is considered by many one of the most accurate prophets they know. He has seen the near future of the world, and he says it's mandatory you know what's coming so you can prepare. Anyone interested in knowing what's coming? I know I am. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Are there hidden forces of darkness trying to block God's blessings for your life? Do angels exist providing us with supernatural protection? Disarming our enemies? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural! Now, my guest is Lauren Sanford, and you may recognize his last name uh, because his parents are like household words in the charismatic movement, John and Paula Sanford. And, um, uh, Lauren, you were telling me that uh, the last two presidents, President Trump and President Obama, you not only knew they were going to win before the election, yes. but you knew details about them and details about their term. But you were telling me about, and this is important, you were telling me about a dream you had about President Obama. Yes. Um, in this dream, I was in a shopping mall, and uh, President, President Obama was there. To, uh, he, he was going to express his grief to the nation over the shootings that have been going on. And um, so I'm walking through the shopping mall and I come to the place where the, shoot, where, where the, where the filming is going to go on. And uh, so I'm filled with this overwhelming love and the impetus from the Lord to go up to Obama, take his hand, and, and I walked right past the Secret Service guy, and take his hand and say, Mr. President, would it be all right if I stood with you? as you make this announcement to the nation. And he began to weep in this dream. He began to weep and uh, grabbed hold of my hand like a drowning man, like, oh, please. And so I told the stagehands, please remove the podium so that we can be seen standing together before the nation um, in, this, in this grief and they could see the love. And I said, Lord, what was that all about? And the Lord said, there is a mandate for the church in this hour if we're gonna have the effect that we're called to have. In these days to come, we are going to have to learn to love with the love of the Father, even the people that we have hated the most, particularly our politicians. You know, we, we didn't really pray for Barack Obama, did we? And we paid for that. Most evangelicals Yes, did not. most evangelicals did not. And so I've given a call that we, we, we must pray for President Trump. And now, you heard so many details about the, the administrations, especially the one in now. But um, in 2015, yes. God told you about the corruption. What did yes. he say? Yes. The Father just said to me very clearly that, that we were going to see an exposure of corruption at such a level and to such a degree in this nation that it would rock the nation. Um, and at first I wondered if I, was, if I was wrong, because it didn't happen right away. But now we're seeing it unfold. We're seeing it begin to, to, to erupt. I, I saw it almost like a boiling pot of, of, of yucky stuff. You also had a word about natural disasters and the new ministries that will evolve. And we've reached a point in mankind's history when the earth can no longer bear up under the accumulated sin of mankind and it's reacting. 
And so we're seeing, I mean, people will say climate change is because of, you know, carbon dioxide and all that. No, the earth is reacting to the sin of mankind. And so we have a historic eruption going on in Hawaii. We've had uh, fires and historic droughts in California. Uh, we, we're seeing an increase in hurricanes. We're seeing a lot of climate change going on. We're going to see more of it. So, so you're saying that all these horrible things it, that many say is the judgment of God, it's just the earth reacting to that accumulated sin. Exactly. There, you know, there, the, the universe operates by law. You know, there's, there's what you sow, you reap. You know, that's law. It's not one law. For, the foolishness of mankind is we think that there's one law for the universe, you know, for the physical universe, and another law spiritually, so that we can do whatever we want morally or spiritually, and that somehow doesn't affect us. But it's the same law both places. You know, that if you jump off the roof of a house, you're going to die or, or break your legs. If you sin, something dies or something is polluted or something is, you know, and it's the same thing with the earth. We have sown so much pollution spiritually and morally into the earth that the earth must react. Okay, when the earth reacts and we see what's going on now and what's coming, uh, what is God going to do with ministries? Yeah, with ministries, here's what I believe. I believe first that he's going to raise up ministries of compassion because this is the hour for Christians to shine with love in every aspect. I mean, the, the revelation of the hour is the Father's love. If we don't get hold of that, we're missing the whole thing. The whole world knows what we hate. They need to know what we love. Um, you know, historically, the Christians won the Roman Empire by loving, not by condemning, not by judging, but by loving. And so we're called to be those who are known for their love. So we're going to see ministries of compassion rising up out of the Christian community. I also believe that there are certain areas of the nation and the world that are what I would call cities of refuge. Um, there's been tremendous work. I'll tell you what, hold that okay. thought. When we come back, he had a literal vision of what's going to happen between now and I believe it was 2020. I want to hear about it. Be right back. Amen. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Get ready to reserve your place on the Sid and Joyce Roth Appointment in Jerusalem Israel Tour, April 11th through the 21st, 2019. See Israel through Jewish eyes and experience the presence and the glory of God in the most supernatural place on earth. Every bus will be hosted by someone who operates in the supernatural. I'm lining up the most supernatural speakers on earth to minister to you. I mean, people like Keith Ellis, Diane Nutt, Kevin Zadai, many others. And we'll be having a supernatural glory of God Passover Seder meal. Don't miss out on going with Sid Roth on this Israel tour, April 11th through the 21st, 2019. The reservations are filling up fast at this special inclusive low price. So call now for the free brochure at 1-800-929-4684. Please specify the Sid Roth Israel trip when you call or visit our website at sidroth.org Israel. Come experience God's presence like never before. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits. Now you can be mentored in operating in the miraculous and also receive your own supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. Whatever you're facing, family problems, financial worries, sickness, depression, this network will make a difference in your life. Whenever, wherever. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So tell me about the vision of the four sticks. Yeah, the vision of the four sticks. It was right after the election, 2016, and we were having um, one of our prayer meetings in our church. And I'm not one who normally gets visions, and so when I get a vision, I pay attention because it's not the normal for me. Usually I just know things. And so I had this vision of four sticks standing up, and the fourth one was bending over like this. And I said, Lord, what is that? And the Lord said, you have, you, the church, have four years in which to prepare. And I saw that in the fourth year, there was a bending. I understood at the same time that if that represents three and a half years, that corresponds to the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry on earth. And at the end of that three and a half years, um, not only was he crucified, but 
two things happened. One, the Holy Spirit was poured out in tremendous power on the day of Pentecost, and the disciples went out, the apostles went out to win the world, and the church just exploded. So there was a tremendous outpouring of the Spirit. And the other thing was there was a tremendous outpouring of persecution. And so what I'm seeing coming, and it may not be, well, let me finish that in a minute. <laughs> what I'm seeing coming is darkness, it's an Isaiah 60 thing. Darkness is coming, and deep darkness will cover the peoples. But at the same time, the nations and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. And I believe that we're living on the threshold of that time. That we're living on the threshold of a time when Holy Spirit will be poured out in glory, uh, I think, to overshadow Pentecost, greater than Pentecost, to affect more people than Pentecost. And we need to be ready for that. This is our time right now. Under Obama, we had someone who did not favor the church and did not favor Israel. God deals with his people according to their relationship with him. He deals with the nations according to, their, according to how they treat his people. And under Obama, we had a lot of trouble. One of the reasons we had such trouble was that Obama did not favor the church, and he wasn't really an enemy of Israel. Under Trump, no matter what else anybody may think of him, he favors the church, and he favors Israel. And I would say to people, do not underestimate the spiritual significance of, of moving our embassy to Jerusalem. There's a... We, one of the reasons we're enjoying one of the reasons we're enjoying such a period of increased prosperity right now isn't just the economic policies of Trump. It's that God's hand of favor is on us because of those things. Now what happens at the end of this four years, the, the three and a half years corresponds with the heat of the next election. Hmm. The next election That's cycle. Interesting. The campaign. Yeah. And we need to pray because um, you know I, in reality, prophecy is very seldom cast in stone. It's, it's uh, conditional. It's conditional upon whether we pray or whether we repent or what we choose to do. And I believe that that vision that I had with the fourth year, I believe that this period of favor can be extended if we pray. We need to pray for this president. And if we do, I believe we can, we can extend this period of time. If we don't, what do you foresee? What is God showing you? If we don't, then I believe that um, Trump may not be reelected. If he is not reelected, we will see a backlash from the extreme left um, that will that will begin again to destroy our civil liberties. That will be that will resume our the, the slide of our nation into corruption. Um, that's what I believe, and it won't be pretty. It won't be pretty. I mean, people. That, that, <laughs> There's been a rising wave of hatred. Do you, do you know what I believe? Yeah. I believe that if everyone in the studio audience and everyone watching right now would add one more prayer to the prayers they pray every morning, and this is the prayer, Lord, I pray that President Trump would have wisdom from on high to govern this nation for freedom of the gospel Amen. so that this whole world can come to the knowledge of the living God. Amen. Add that prayer. Amen. If you'll do that, we can delay and delay and delay, and I'm going to live a long time, but i just as soon it be delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, when we come back, I, I want you to tell me about what is ready to happen. It's the greater glory, and he says you have to prepare for what's going on. And I'll give you a clue. Here is what is not the preparation. Guns, food, and water. That's <laughs> not in his paradigm. Amen. We'll be right back. <laughs> We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But Scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. 
One New Humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how One New Humanity is critical to bringing <laughs> multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. The supernatural of God knows no bounds. And now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN. The It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. People are astounded at the miracles they've seen others receive on our TV programs. Now, viewers are experiencing that same touch of God, and you can too. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Access our life-changing specials led by top world-class teachers or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Television schedules were fine for my parents' generation, but with the ISN app, I can watch what I want on my schedule. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, now, Lauren had abdominal surgery, and he had a visitation from an angel. <laughs> this interests me. Tell me about that, this Dr. Angel. Yeah, well, this one was crazy. I, I, Meshuggah, I, we just call it. Yeah, well, <laughs> what had happened is, is I, I'd had six inches of colon removed. It was a colon resection mm -hmm. because of diverticulitis. And, um, you know, doctors will lie to you about how long you're going to be laid up. You know, they'll say two weeks, add 50%. And so you know, three weeks after that, I'm lying in bed. I'm still in tremendous pain. And I think I was about three quarters awake and lying on my bed. And I look over to the bedroom door and in the bedroom door, suddenly in multicolored armor instead of the whole white. And he came over to my bed and he took a knife and stabbed it into the place where the pain was. And I was shot through with this tremendous pain and I sat straight up in the bed which I hadn't been able to do and I thought it was a demon and I started rebuking it I started saying you know get out of here in the name of Jesus and then I realized oh there's no pain <laughs> and I didn't have any pain after that so <laughs> this crazy angel <laughs> well I understand uh, that because of the way God has touched you, that sometimes in your co home congregation, you pray and as many as 70% get healed. I asked my people, because we were, we were talking about mm -hmm. healing, and I said, how many of you that are, that are part of this church have experienced a healing while you were here? And I'm guessing 70% of their people, of, of my people raised their hands. Now, yeah, I, 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 was I would surprised. say there's a lot of glory in his congregation. <laughs> I was surprised. Uh, Speaking of glory, you had a vision of the field of oil. Yeah, and that one just came on me suddenly. It was, a, it was a sudden sense of this tremendous, heavy, thick love of God. It was a beautiful, sweet anointing. And it was like the Lord was pouring over my head and over the head of the church, this thick, thick, thick oil. I mean, we're talking an inch thick. And it rolled down, and, and when it hit the floor, it began to spread out. And, and this, is, this is what I saw. I saw that what God wants to do in this time, and this is available for any believer that gets ready. Mm -hmm. it, it, I saw that God wants to pour such a presence on us, such a glory, such an anointing for healing and restoration, that we so radiate, so radiate the love of the Father uh, and the presence of God, that when we come in contact with people in the world who've been so deluded to think that darkness is light, 
when people are exposed to the pure light and presence of Jesus, darkness is exposed to be light. And people say, I want what you have. When people come in contact with my 46-year marriage, your 53-year marriage, and they see the glory that God has put on us, and they look at their own lives, then they begin to say, how did you get there? And then they feel the love flowing off of us. I believe that people ought to, I, I don't believe that, that, you know, when Peter walked, when Peter walked through a crowd and his shadow fell on people, they got healed just from his shadow. I don't believe that was only for Peter. I believe that's where God wants us to walk. Right. And I believe that I if believe we receive it, those kinds of things will happen, that that oil will flow off of us. You talk about essential things in preparation. Yes. And one thing you talked about that really hit me, the need for hunger for God. Yes. Comment on that. Yeah, I will comment on that. It's, we, when things get easy, like right now in a, in a season of favor, it's really easy for us to fall asleep. It's really, we get lulled. You know, that sometimes I think that prosperity is a poison to the body of Christ. But right now, this season of prosperity is a time to prepare. It's a time to get out of debt. It's a time to seek after God. It's a time to cultivate our hunger for God. I am going to seek after God. That is a decision of my will because I need Him. That's the beginning. Um, I'm not going to ignore my hunger for God. I don't care what I'm feeling. I'm seeking after God. That's, that's a covenant. There are certain covenants I will not renegotiate in my life. One of them is my covenant with my wife. I will never renegotiate that. And the other is my covenant with God. No matter what comes against me, I will not renegotiate that covenant. The second thing, there are three parts to that, I think, that are, and they're so simple, three parts. The second thing is we've got to start hungering after the Word. The, the two least attended meetings in any church are prayer and Bible study. And I, I, you know, I came through the Jesus movement, and I remember everything back then was the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. You never went anywhere without your sword. And now, um, Bible study? No, everybody wants an experience. And so we have a whole generation of biblically, biblically illiterate Christians who will buy anything that's said to them because they don't know the Word. Yeah. You know, the Word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit. You put that Word into you, and it works. Yeah. It begins to change you. So going back to what you said, if I don't feel like reading the Bible, so what? It's living, it's alive, it's coming uh -huh. into me. If the Word is Jesus, right. why would I reject Jesus? Exactly. My and mother if, didn't raise a dummy. Yeah, and, <laughs> and on the other hand, I don't care if you're reading it and you don't understand. The words go in there, and your spirit works on them, and eventually the understanding comes out. You know, there are people watching us right now, and you are like many of my friends, you would like to know God, but you don't. You'd like to hear God, but you don't. You'd like to experience God, but you don't. Say this prayer with me and mean it to the best of your ability, and I tell you, you have given the permission for God mm -hmm. to live inside of you and have intimacy with the living God. Repeat out loud, dear God. Dear God. Dear God. I've made many mistakes. I've made many mistakes. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe. I believe. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Washes away all my sins. Washes away all my sins. And I'm clean. And I'm clean. And now that I'm clean. Now that I'm clean. Jesus, come inside of me. Jesus, come inside of me. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. You promised to never leave me or forsake me. You promised never to leave me or forsake me. And give me the grace. Give me the grace. To not walk away from you. To not walk away from you. I want to have such a hunger for you, God. I want to have such a hunger for you, God. And I am going to willfully. Willfully. Seek you with all of my heart. Seek you with all of my heart. Amen. Amen. You know what that means? It means so be it. It's finished. Amen. Amen. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. On Saturday, I did a lot of yard work. I couldn't move. I hurt so bad in my lower back. My six-year-old had to help pull me off of the sofa to take him to school. I got back home and turned on your program with David Herzog. He talked about people supernaturally losing weight, 
The program ended, so I got up and turned off the TV. Then I realized that I had gotten up off of the sofa with no pain. I looked down at my stomach and my jogging pants were looser. It blew my mind that I not only was healed, but I lost some weight too. I began dancing around the room. I am so grateful for your show. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I am Tony Kemp and I have literally been mentored by It's Supernatural program. And now I'm seeing signs, wonders and miracles on a regular basis. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as I share how you too can have face-to-face -face encounters with God through the Messiah, Yeshua. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.